Okay, so let's go to the message this morning. And um, so the text would be in Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. And that's been read already. I'll just read it again. Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require thine hand. In verse 19, Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Shall we pray? Most precious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your word, O God. And Lord, I just uh, pray, dear Father, that you would be with me, anoint these lips, dear Lord, that I might be uh, the instrument, O God, for your word. Lord, uh, fill me up with the Holy Spirit. Open the hearts, Lord, of your children here to be receptive of your word that your word, that your will may be done, O God. All these things I pray in Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen. So here, um, God was telling the prophet Ezekiel that he is the watchman unto the house of Israel. So watchmen uh, were guards in the, in the olden times, in the Old Testament, their cities are uh, protected by walls. And on top of it are watchmen. So uh, they, they act as lookouts upon the land. They would be looking out in the distance uh, to see if uh, there are any unusual activity. But most especially, they will warn the people of an impending attack from their enemy. That's the job of uh, the watchman. So here, we read that God's call to Ezekiel was to warn his people of God's coming judgment. And in the same uh, in Acts chapter 20, verse 26 to 27, the same uh, words that Paul applied to these words to, uh, to God's call to warn the lost. Now, every Christian, every born again, you say, let's, we are born again, we are blood washed, we have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, our personal Savior. Let us remember that we are watchmen, a watchmen for the souls of those uh, lost. So this morning, I'm going to uh, give you four reasons why there is an urgency of evangelism. So the title of the message this morning is The Urgency of Evangelism. So I told you earlier that uh, we need to go to the Philippines because there is a need. There is an urgency for uh, the gospel to be uh, given to those who are lost. So why there is an urgency of evangelism? Evangelism is telling someone... Uh, telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ, telling them how to have a home in heaven, telling them to, uh, to, for them to prepare when, that when they die, they will have a home in, in uh, heaven. So number one is that God is burdened about it, evangelism. God is burdened about it. Let us uh, remember that evangelism began in the heart of God. When he created the earth, he knew that man would, would fall into sin. That's why uh, it is in his foreknowledge that he has to send his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in order for us to have uh, uh, that relationship back to, to God. So God the Father is burdened about the sinner's doom. In Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11, in the book of Ezekiel 33, 11, it says, There say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. So God has no pleasure for people to go to hell. So he is burdened about it. In John chapter 3, verse 16, very familiar verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved the world. It is us. It is the people out there that God loved that he sent his only son to die on the cross of Calvary to shed his precious blood for us to be 
reconciled with God. For us not to go to that place called hell. And in 2 Peter also, chapter 3, verse 9, in 2 Peter, the Apostle Peter was telling us, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us inward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God does not want us to go to hell. God does not want those lost people out there to go to hell. He wants those people also to have that gospel. That's why we are watchmen unto their souls. So number one reason is God is burdened about it. Jesus Christ also, the Son of God. Jesus Christ is burdened about the sinner's doom. When Jesus said in Luke chapter 5, verse 32, Luke 5, 32 in our Bible, it says there, Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. If you are someone who said, I am righteous, well, Jesus Christ did not come for you. Because Jesus Christ said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The Lord Jesus Christ has that burden of the sinner's doom. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Luke chapter 19, verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ came into this world to die on that cross of Calvary to shed his precious blood for sinners to come to repentance. God the Father is burdened about it. Remember that. God the Son, Jesus Christ, is burdened about the sinner's doom. Even in John chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus Christ said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Jesus Christ gave his life for the sheep. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, is burdened about the sinner's doom and also of the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit. By the way, why is it God the Father, God the Son? We believe in the Trinity. Some, some religion out there, they don't believe in the Trinity because they said uh, Trinity is not in the Bible, but First John 5, 7, it clearly states about the Trinity, that there are three that bear record in heaven. So God the Holy Spirit is burdened about the sinner's dome also. It's not only God the Father, it's not only God the Son, Jesus Christ, but also the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit is also burdened about the sinner's doom. John chapter 16, verse 18. In John 16, verse 8, sorry. John 16, verse 8. Jesus said of the Holy Spirit, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. It is the Holy Spirit that will convict, will reprove the sinner. That's why when we go out there and uh, uh, tell the lost about the gospel, we don't have to be afraid. Because it is the job of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that will reprove the sinner. It is the Holy Spirit that will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of the judgment. That's why in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 also, Acts 1 8, before Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, he told his disciples to wait, to wait. But ye shall receive power, Acts 1.8. What does it says? But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So we have been given by that power, the power of the Holy Ghost. Once you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, once you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you are indwelt with the Holy Ghost. And it is that Holy Ghost that will uh, empower you when you tell the lost about the gospel. So it is the Holy Ghost. God the Father is burdened about it. Jesus Christ is burdened about it. The Holy Ghost is also burdened about the sinner's doom. So the burden of God for sinners makes evangelism urgent. We need to double time our effort. God knew when he created man, he gave man a will. Because he wants man's voluntary, volunta voluntary love. He does not force on someone. He wants the will of man to come to him. 
But we need to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus says, an eye, if, an eye if be lifted up, will draw all men to him. So if God has that burden for sinners, how about us? We are saved by God to do something. And that thing is to tell the gospel to the lost. And that makes us a watchman. And by the way, all of us are missionaries. All of us are missionaries. You say, where's my field? Everywhere you go, you can find lost souls. That is your field. We are watchmen. If they die in their sin, if they die in their iniquity, our text tells us that if those wicked person, those lost, if they die in their iniquity, and you have not shared to them the gospel, their blood will be upon your hands. If we have some relatives still that don't know, have not trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, it is our responsibility for them. We have classmates, we have workmates that needs to know the gospel, does not have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. We are a watchman unto their souls. When they die without us telling them the gospel, their blood will be upon our hands. But maybe you said, I have told them, but they do not believe. The text also said, if you have told them and they did not heed, their blood will not be upon your hands. You are free. So if the God of the universe, the God of this universe is burdened about the doom of sinners, our hearts also ought to break for those lost. So number one, God is burdened about it. Number two, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. It says there, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Number two, let me submit to you this morning. People in hell right now are screaming about it. Number one, God is burdened about it. People in hell right now are screaming about it. Here in the second Thessalonians it says, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God. There are people out there that don't believe in the Lord. People out there that does not believe in God. They are the unbelievers that will spend eternity in a fiery hell. And hell, folks, is real. It's not just a man-made thing. It's real. So those that know not God, those that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, they will spend eternity in hell. So this urgency of evangelism is scream. From the fires of hell. Unbelievers will spend eternity in hell. The religious but lost. They will also spend eternity in hell. Matthew chapter 7. What does it say? Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7 verse 22 to 23. Many will say to me in that day. Lord, Lord have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them. The Lord says I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Plenty of people out there, me also in the Philippines, they claim they are religious, but they are lost. Now, today, it's September 29 in the Philippines, there is what we call uh, a feast of San Miguel. San Miguel is a patron of uh, the Catholic Church in Iligan. And they, will, they are celebrating the fiesta over there. They said they are religious. When you ask those Catholics in the Philippines if they are saved, if you ask them, are you sure you go to heaven when you die? Most of them will say yes. And if you are the soul winner, if you'll just stop right there because, because they said, oh, okay, they're going to, they said they're going to heaven. But if you continue asking them, why, how do you know that you are going to heaven and then you will know that they don't have the right gospel because they will 
just tell you, well, I have, when I was small, I was baptized. I have already uh, had my first communion. I have completed the seven sacraments. But it's not the seven sacraments that will bring us to heaven. It's only our faith, our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith in His shed blood on the cross of Calvary. So there are people that call themselves religious. And Philippines is considered one of the uh, most religious country in Asia. Because we've been under by uh, Spain for 330 years. That's why 95% of the Filipinos are Catholics. So they say they are religious, but they are lost. This verse in Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, 10, 23, they said, Lord, we have prophesied in thy name. Maria Theresa have done good works. She prophesied in the name of Jesus Christ, but she is lost. Those people are the religious. They said they are religious, but they need the real gospel. And the gospel is the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So unbelievers will spend, in, uh, spend eternity in a fiery hell. The religious but lost, they will spend their eternity in hell. And hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of torment. Just go to Luke chapter 16, verse 23 to 24. Luke 16, this is a very uh, familiar verse also about the rich man and Lazarus. And some said, they said, this is a parable. No, it's not a parable. It's, it's real. In verse 23, it says, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. This is the rich man. And seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus with him he dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am, what? Tormented in this Place. Friends, hell is real. It's a place of torment. Hell also has no escape. There's no escape once you're in hell. This building, we, we cannot occupy this if the builders don't have, uh, have provided those exit doors. But in hell, there is no exit. If you're in hell, you will be there for eternity. That is why if you are not sure, if you're 100% sure with your salvation... You need to be 100% sure that you have Jesus Christ. You have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hell has no escape. Luke chapter 20, uh, Luke 16, the same chapter, Luke 16, verse 25 to 26. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou tormented. And beside all this, listen to this, between us, you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Those people in hell right now, suffering in hell, do not want also their loved ones to come to that place. Let's continue reading in verse 27, Luke 16, 27 to 28. It says there, then, then he said, the rich man said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have, what? Five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. I still have five brethren. Please send Lazarus to tell them. And, and the next verse, that Abraham said, no, we have, they have already the prophets. So those if we have loved ones who are right now in hell, they don't want us to go there. If you are not saved this morning, if you have not trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, your loved one that is in hell right now don't want you to come to that place because that is a place of torment. We need to be sure that we have Jesus in our heart. So the cries from hell, it makes evangelism urgent. Those cries in hell right now. So just take time to meditate on this. Chapter in this verse, Luke chapter 16. They're, 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 they're painful cries right now. They don't want people to go to that place. And the gospel only, friends, the gospel is good news, right? But the gospel is only good news if it reaches to the lost in time. It's not good news if they don't reach 
the lost in time. Let me give you an illustration. There was, there was a man, a prisoner was sentenced to die. And his execution would, be, would happen at 8 o'clock in the morning. And the president pardoned him at 7 o'clock. And he sent the messenger to tell the executioner to stop that he has been pardoned. But the messenger was lingering along the way. When he arrived, it was already late, 8.01. The execution already happened. Whose fault was that? Is it the executioner? Is it the president? Or the messenger? It's the messenger. And we are the messenger of the gospel. We are the watchmen. If you say, I am saved this morning, I have Jesus Christ in my heart. I have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. It is our responsibility to tell the lost of that gospel, that good news. If they die and they go to hell, their blood will be upon your hands, will be upon our hands. So the gospel is only good news if it reaches the lost in time. Number three, God is burdened about it. Number one, number two, the Christ from hell, people right there are screaming about it, about the evangelism. And thirdly, the Holy Spirit that is within us is urging about it. I've said earlier, once you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, you have that Holy Spirit in you. And it is that Holy Spirit that is urging us to tell the lost about the gospel. So evangelism is also urged by the Holy Spirit. We all knew that our body is the temple of God and that the Spirit dwelleth in us, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Corinthians 3, 16, it says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and the, the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So the Holy Spirit, it gives the inner urging in Acts chapter 8, verse 29. Acts 8, 29. This is about the Philip, uh, Philip and the eunuch. Acts 8.29, it says, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Now we see here in this verse that the uh, eunuch was, all, uh, was reading the gospel, the gospel, the book of Isaiah. But the Holy Spirit told Philip, Philip, go near to this eunuch and explain to him the gospel. So, yes, giving out gospel tracts is good. It's okay. It's still the gospel. But it is more better if we explain to them the gospel. Because of this verse, the Holy Spirit said, Philip, go near to the eunuch. Because the eunuch said, how can I understand except someone will explain it to me? Am I right? So it is the Holy Spirit that gives us also that inner urging. You need to tell this lost about the gospel. Have you experienced that? You, you have been with someone that you know that he or she is lost. He or she does not have the Lord Jesus Christ. And there was that inner urging. Do I need to tell her, tell him about the gospel? Do I need even to give this gospel tracts to this person? It is that Holy Spirit that is within us that is urging. So there is the, uh, the urging of the Holy Spirit that is within us. The Holy Spirit also empowers the believers to witness. Acts 1.8, we have read it earlier. Acts 1.8, but you shall receive Power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now let me sidetrack for a while. How do we fulfill, in this verse, the uttermost part of the earth? Okay, let's read again the verse. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. Talking to the believers, it is us. We are witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. That's the city. Your city is Sunbury. Your city also could be your immediate relative. Your parents, if you, if you have, still have parents that are lost. Your aunties, your uncles, your cousins. That's your city. That's your Jerusalem. Your Judea is the province. Your extended families. And in Samaria. Samaria, Samaritans, the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. We all know that because the, the Samaritans are mixed Jews. They're sinners. They are the enemy of the Jews. In our life, do we, have, do we have someone that don't like us? Maybe our neighbors don't like us because they threw their garbage to us and then we threw it back. Again. 
that makes them our enemy. But you know what? They are our Samaria. They need to know the gospel. They need to have the Lord Jesus Christ. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. How do we fulfill the uttermost part of the earth when we cannot even go to the next state? This deputation, this, this, this gives us the opportunity to travel first time in, from, in our life for 12 years here in, in Australia. First time to go to Brisbane last, last week and last June we've been able to go to Tasmania. So our uttermost part of the earth, how can we fulfill this verse? It's giving through missions. It's giving through missions. Because every dollar that we give to missions, that you support those missionaries in the foreign field, you have fulfilled this verse. So the Holy Spirit gives that inner urging. The Holy Spirit empowers the believers to witness. And this Spirit's conviction that is within us makes evangelism urgent. It makes evangelism urgent. Acts 20, 26. Acts chapter 20, verse 26. Paul said, Wherefore I take to you record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. And I hope this morning that makes our goal also. We have not shunned the gospel, or we have not withhold the gospel to the lost. Evangelism, the urgency of evangelism. Number one, why? Because God is burdened about it. Number two, people in hell right now are screaming about it. Number three, thirdly, it is the Holy Spirit that is within us is urging about it, about evangelism. Number four, lastly this morning, hopeless people needs the gospel. Hopeless people needs the gospel. I really like the, the, na uh, the name of the church, Hope Baptist Church. Because it is only through Jesus Christ that those hopeless people can have hope. Psalms 142 verse 4. Psalms 142 verse 4. This verse was about David when he was uh, uh, on the run from Saul, King Saul. He said in verse number 4, chapter 142, and I look on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. There are people that are hopeless out there. They, they, know, they just believe that once their life ends and that's it. Hindus, Buddhists, they believe that just if they do good on this life, when they die, they turn into a butterfly or something. And some said, death is just, that's it. That's the end. They're hopeless. But what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this is the judgment. So many people think that there is no more hope beyond this life. They think that death ends everything. Suddenly, they do not realize Deep within their heart, that spiritual void that only God can fill. Deep within every human heart, the open not realized is that spiritual void that only God can fill. They are looking for fulfillment, but they do not know that their need is God's salvation. People don't have hope, they just resort to uh, gambling. Just to satisfy, they, they turn to alcohol just to satisfy. But after everything, still they don't have hope. Only the Lord Jesus Christ, only God can fill that void in their life. So, we as Christians this morning, we are same. We are tasked by the Lord Jesus Christ. God did not save us just to have the comfort of these chairs to attend every Sunday. Yes, it's good to be present always. I encourage you to be present always whenever the doors are open. 
But we still have that responsibility to tell the lost about the gospel. That's why we, when we uh, decided to set aside the comfort of Australia, leave everything and go back to our, my people, it is because the soul is so precious in the sight of God. We need to bring the gospel to the lost. We need to reach those who are eternally lost before it is too late. But maybe you say to yourself, I cannot go. I have work. I am tied up with my job. You can pray. You can pray. You can give. And you can be faithful in your missions giving. You can be faithful in your tithes and offerings. You can be faithful in your church attendance. You can be faithful in your prayer. And that will be an encouragement also for your pastor. Yes, in conclusion, God is burdened about it. People, people in hell right now are screaming about it, about evangelism, about the gospel. The Holy Spirit that is living in us is urging about it. And hopeless people, they need it. So the need to share the gospel is more urgent than words can express. Jesus Christ's last word before he ascended to, to heaven, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Very familiar verse. Go ye therefore, go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Let us remember, all of us are missionaries. We are tasked to share the gospel. And I hope that God's last command would be our first concern. The lost of lost sinners are depending on you and me this morning. If you are not 100% sure of your salvation, you need to be 100% that you have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, that you have one time in your life acknowledged that you are a sinner for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That is only through Jesus Christ for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not through church membership. It's not through our good works. It is not through our righteousness. It is only through the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're already a Christian, if you're a believer this morning, and God has convicted you, the Holy Spirit has convicted you to do something for the Lord, to do something more for the Lord. I, the Holy Spirit is urging you to be more faithful, not just faithful, but more faithful in the church. Listen to that still, small voice. As Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. You don't have to quit your job and go to the mission field. Right now, everywhere you find lost people. In your workplace, in your area, in your neighborhood, you are a missionary. Tell the people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's do it without delay. Let's do it in full obedience because partial obedience is still disobedience for God. Thank you so much for listening, Pastor. Well, I don't know about you, but there's a few um, few things that Brother Arnie mentioned that um, that uh, I noted down, and when he said in that first point, the burden of God for sinners makes evangelism urgent, and we know that our Lord died for the sake of the lost, and it's so important. It's it's primary. It's the absolute most important thing in the world that we can do. There's nothing, nothing else that should be standing in our way. If you're saved, there's nothing else that should be standing in your way. Another one that he mentioned, he said the gospel is only good news if it reaches the lost in time. I don't know about you, but that really convicted my heart. You know, that it is. It's only good news if it reaches. It's too late otherwise. And that makes the gospel urgent. And on this last one, he mentions God's last command should be our first concern. 
I mean, that, that, that summarises our duty. That summarises our work as those who know the Lord, love the Lord, and that we will grow in our burden for the lost. And we need to be growing in our burden for the lost. Nothing else should be taking priority over the top of that. Nothing should be. And if, and if something does, then your priorities are not in their proper perspective. Brother Ronnie also mentioned there's so many different ways that you can actually partake in the work. Prayer. Prayer. Oh, we need to be people of prayer. You know, there, there is principalities and powers that, that, are, that are moved by our prayers. How that works, I don't know. Why that has to work, I also don't know. Why are we privileged with this work of the gospel, I also don't know. But we are. We need to pray. Pray for the lost. Give to those who are actually doing the work. Support the ministry of the work. Support the ministry of the church. Without taking away the responsibility that you already have within your own families. That's all so vitally important. But everything about your life and your work needs to be wrapped around this because you won't be spending one moment in heaven that you won't be thinking, I could have done so much more. To be honest, when I think about the, the tears that the Lord is going to wipe from our eyes in heaven, I thought, this, there can't be any tears in heaven. You know, it's just not, that doesn't, we're supposed to be all joyful. Honestly, I reckon the moment that we're there, it's going to be regret, potentially regret. What could I have done more? for the gospel could i have actually spent my life for the sake of the gospel of christ that's so important let's pray father we do give you thanks what a wonderful blessing it was this morning to hear the word of god to hear it preached dear lord that we might be able to understand and to know to convict our hearts dear lord and i pray dear father if there is one sinner here who has heard the gospel of christ let him know dear lord that a simple cry to his savior would save would save. I ask and pray, Lord, that you continue to be with us and bless us abundantly in Jesus' wonderful name. We give you thanks and praise. Amen. Amen.